Hello everyone and welcome back to the Chupacabra's Lair. Today we're going to be playing a rousing round of Don't Starve with Savrick at the helm. Yay, that's me. Hello. I am of course Larry the Chupacabra, this is Savrick the Dread Pirate, and we're going to go get murdered in this crazy survival game of Don't Starve. You don't look so good. You better find something to eat before night comes. Okay, so this is Don't Starve, a awesome survival game. Taking little bits of other survival games and making their own better version. Maybe not better, but it's a great alternative. So, it, it, the first thing you might get struck by is it's like a well-illustrated version of Minecraft from like the top down sort of perspective and it kind of is in that it's a survival game where you're in the woods trying not to get murdered by the wilderness but it's it's really not at the same time even beyond just not being made out of a bunch of squares and blocks and shit whereas you can really only just gather materials that are there in present in the vi environment you can't really dig into the ground or anything and so your goal is to survive and not starve, as I even name. But it's also got a bit of a storyline that I'll talk about when we get a little further in that's a, a tad more linear than Minecraft, where Minecraft, the only real storyline is the end, and you kind of murder a dragon, and you're like, that's weird, okay, whatever. Yeah, so starting out, you pretty much just want to pick up everything that you see. It's all You're useful a, uh, for something. You're a magical pack rat. Yeah, you have a, a good size inventory, so just pick it up. If you don't need it, you can drop it. Um, and that... At the top right, you see a little clock thing. Yellow is daytime. Red, or brownish red, I don't know what you call that, is right before night when you should start making a fire and getting ready for nighttime. Which and is the black part. Is night time, and that's murder time. And um, when I say murder time, I literally mean murder time. You need a campfire or a torch or something, because the darkness will fondle you to death. Yeah. And I don't. I don't know if you guys are too familiar with the concept of a mythical creature called the Gru. I think it's like G R U, but you can Google it for like some in-depth information on that. Essentially, the Gru is a creature of darkness who lives in the night and fondles you sensually to death if you don't have light sword. So as you can see I just crafted a axe. Crafting mini is over on the left. It's super easy to use. Once you have the right materials you just click build. You don't have to situate stuff right or anything like that. It's very user friendly. So now I'm chopping down trees and I'm gonna get stuff to make a fire. Fire go. One other aspect about this game that I really like is that it's always going to be challenging you in one way or another. So you're always going to be trying to find some sort of resource that you have to usually travel for. In this case, it's going to be food, I think, because I haven't seen much of it around. Yeah, this is a situation where there's very limited resources that are relatively renewable. Um, so you're, you're constantly traveling further and further out to get more of something. And that's, it's eventually the point where you want to leave this particular world full of murder and evil. And we'll get to that a little teensy-weensy bit later, probably when we find some of the items that relate to it. Right now I'm getting sort of lucky because of this gold that I'm digging out of these rocks. I think last time I played probably went for almost an hour before I even got one piece. And you need it to really advance in the game anywhere. Pretty much immediately. Two, they really prevent you from just kind of making shit out in the wilderness, whereas in, like, Minecraft, you can kind of just go and, uh, you know, get enough wood to make a crafting bench, and then you can just go wherever with your basic supplies to go forage and just kind of hang out there for the night. This game, not so much. You, when you put certain, when you put, like, a, uh, a cooking thingy jigger down, or a science thingy jigger, that allows you to make more dynamic tools and pretty much everything but the basic set. 
you, once you put it down, you can't pick it back up without destroying it and losing some of the materials used in making it. Don't fuck it up when you put it down. Alright, so I have enough stuff to make a fire pit, which is really nice because they stay forever. You just have to add fuel to them. Uh, you can make a small campfire, but it goes away once it's out. So, I prefer to make the pit. But we need to find a good spot to do so. Check my map and see what's around. Map is also pause mode, so you can just jump into the map, think about your next move, and not waste any time of daylight. And there's a really creepy graveyard with gold on the ground. I've never seen that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, graveyards will have like random shit like gold and gems on the ground. You'll usually go a little bit crazy if you pick some stuff up from around in there. Yeah, so by crazy over here you can see the little sanity uh, meter and that goes down. You start so, to hallucinate and imagine monsters that will hurt you. Let's just run down the resources. Your personal like character resources are your hunger meter. It's kind of bad that for that to go down because you start to starve and the whole point of this game is not starving and getting murdered. It's right there in the title. Then there's the brain. It's in orange. Brain is essentially... Let's think of that as your meter to the magic world. When you're completely happy and sane, the world is relatively normal. But when you're crazy, there's demons everywhere that want to fondle and murder your face. So since I can't find a really good spot right now, I'm just going to build a basic campfire and we'll keep looking for a better spot when daylight comes. You try to stay around little rabbit holes in the ground, because it's a good renewable food resource. They're magic meat holes. So now we're just going to wait out the night, which luckily doesn't take too long. So essentially, our goal right now, in the first episode, is we're going to go find a spot, we're going to build a campfire, we're going to build a prototyping science machine, and get started on making some more advanced shit that we will get into further detail with next time. I already have the stuff to make the science machine, so that's really good. It's a good start. Yeah, it already. only took us like 40 hours the last time. Yeah, it did take a really long time. You also notice you're not finding like a thousand cheaty boons everywhere. Yeah. So one thing I do like about this game is replayability just because of that is always nice. I mean, it's always different. There are different characters you unlock that have different little perks to them. I'm just playing with the first guy you get. I can't remember his name. So essentially, this is Wilson. Each character has a, their own little power or ability or unique passive. And you can't see it yet, but he grows a magnificent beard. Now, every, every character's passive has a downside at the same time. His beard allows him to get access to beard clippings which are used in magic. A lot of magic. You need beard hair for lots of stuff. Don't ask me why. But, um... So you need beard hair. It's also great because in wintertime you can grow it out like a bearded coat. You just braid that sucker into some sleeves and some, you know, long johns and you've got yourself some good shit for winter. But the downside is it, it kind of slowly drains your sanity, so you gotta offset it with like a hat full of flowers or something if you don't shave it off. It's not a terrible lot, but it's enough to be annoying if you're not paying attention or you just don't want to deal with it. So, unlocking other characters, pretty basic. The longer you live in this game on one character, um, the more experience you get when this character dies or you finish this playthrough and then you get experience points put towards the rest of the characters. There's a chick named Willow, um, I forget the other one's name, but one of them is not affected by fire. Uh, unfortunately, they're a little weaker. One of them has got like a demon imaginary friend, I forget what the demon imaginary friend does. And then one of them is the strong man. He's got twice as much health, he does twice as much damage, but 
He's a sissy. He goes crazy faster. Um, he's constantly overcompensating, and you got to feed him a lot more to keep his hunger bar at a good level. My personal favorite is the strongman, because you can pretty much just go into murder mode. You can't stop me. And welcome to the swamp biome. This is where Savrick will probably be fondled, Japanese style. Just wait for it. Yeah, I've actually never seen this biome before. It seems pretty cool so far, but I'm also kind of terrified. You'll know when action's about to happen. All I can say is just be careful where you walk. Like that stuff over there. I see it moving. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna hang out here. We'll go a little bit close, but don't. Just so they pop out. So what you can't see is the swamp is full of oh, demon tentacles God, like oh, that. that thing. Um, you can kill them, and you can get a spiked pronged mace. That's fantastic. I'll actually hang out on the edge of these places later in the game and just pick up the, the ones that drop when monsters fight each other. So, there's two types of NPCs. There's mermen, and then there's pigmen. Mermen are not your friends, but when you murder them, they drop fish, frog legs, um, and sometimes monster meat. You can pretty much just murder the shit out of them. This is actually really lucky right now, it's because I ran into an already dead one. Right, and they're pretty much in a steady source of food once you get enough resources to just fight the shit out of them. Those ones are hostile by default, the other version is just that, that's pink. That's Pigman. Oh look, a boon. This one has a chest with a uh, blueprints in it. Oh, that's cool. Just learn those on the spot. So these boons that are basically just skeletons next to some resources or a chest full of goodness. Um, you can break, well, I guess you don't have a hammer. If you had a hammer, you could break that chest and get the boards it was made from. But boons are randomly spawned, like, you know, game help. They give you some sort of resource. It's not always useful. But they're pretty sweet anyway. So, okay, here we go. Different biome. This is good. Hopefully there's some rabbits in this one somewhere. And there's a road, which is nice. We travel faster on the road. So here's another boon. They just spawn next to these random skeleton. And there's a pig house over there. Pig houses are usually not dilapidated. They usually have good things next to them. Just leave that crank there for now. We'll come back for it. So that's that's one of the that's one of the lore items I was talking about previously. Um, so essentially, spoilers, everyone. Spoilers ahead of time. And if you want to play this game, you don't want to listen to this. Just uh, give us a berth for a little bit while I talk about this. Um, boo these lore items are essentially that black guy at the start of the game. I guess you were working together on some sort of amnesia type crazy machine. And he pushed you into it, and so that's the crank that lets you open up the portal to go through the long line of dimensions that are all kind of fucked up in their own special little way to find him and beat the game. I've yet to go through all of them. I think I got bored with it halfway through the, the long line of uh, dimensions, but it's pretty cool. For instance, um, in one dimension I ran into, it'll rain frogs that want to murder you. Literally raining frogs. So, still not finding a biome that I'd like to live in. This is... This is the beauty of this game. So, essentially we're trying to find a randomly spawned prairie biome, which is full of rabbit holes. And rabbits, you just bake a little rabbit trap, and you just dump it over top of the hole, and they eventually run into it, and it's free meat. Forever. It's, it's considered, like, the biggest poon move in the game, but everyone does it.
So now we'll just wait out the brief period of night again. You might also notice... Well, it's not super apparent right now, but... As the days go by, the time meter will shift for seasons. So right now, we're getting more daylight slowly, because we're hitting the peak of summertime. Not too long from now, probably by like day 8, it'll start shifting back towards uh, less daylight, more nighttime, when it hits winter. And winter is a pain in the ass. But we'll get to that when we reach winter. So, planning my next move. Hmm. Well, looks like there's some prairie down there. Or is that just rock? No, it's rocky area. I think I'm gonna we'll... guess... I'm gonna guess the prairie's probably off to your left. We'll try that. Wait for night to uh, go away. So it's already almost over. So, fun facts on food while we're waiting for daytime. Food. Food is delicious because food starts out in raw form. We don't necessarily recommend you eat raw food of various varieties, but you can cook it at a fire for basic cooking. Monster meat will always make you sick. It'll fill your hunger, but it will hurt you. So that you have to cook with something to make it not murdery. You can make like a crock pot and have better recipes that fill up your hunger and everything like that more efficiently. But to make that, I need a science machine. Right, we had to constantly walk out, which is gonna be shit for winter. This is one of those games where it's like a constant time constraint, which is sort of weird. And that rock he just passed, the weird one, doesn't look like the other ones we mined earlier. That's the way to the underworld. The dark cave systems that had just come out when I quit playing, but I never really got around to exploring. So our next step is we're going to find us a prairie and murder the shit out of some rabbits. So let's just, uh, we'll just clip her here and then we will join you again when we find our ass a prairie. Here we go. Alright, welcome back everybody. We got, we finally found a prairie down south. As you can see, there's these little rabbits with like animal bug feelers on them and we want to eat them because they are delicious they are made of meat so I'm just gonna set up shop kinda over here buy a lot of them but ra not right next to them ooh what is this oh Touch ooh, you're next to it. a touchstone that's really convenient so That's apparently, a... if you touch that and you die, you come back to life. On there, it's like the stone table in the Narnia movie, or, yeah, the Narnia movies. You get murdered and you appear there and the stone table shatters and you can't use it again. And those pig heads around it can be broken and used for pig skin for other stuff. They're not entirely important. So there's random little items that are kind of hovered around like that. Um... Later, you can make a magical meat effigy that will also resurrect you, but it's not as good. But it's reusable in that you can make more of them. I like using both because it'll usually use one than the other, so you always have a backup in case you get murdered at your campsite, and then you get murdered again. So I'm just making a few traps right now to put around, hopefully catch some rabbits. Little wabbits. So I have food. And then we're gonna make a science machine, and we'll catch you on the next episode after that. There we go. 
go. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us, and uh, we're gonna continue doing more Don't Starve stuff. So uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if there's something you'd like to see us do or something you'd like us to see us find and piss off. And or we'll catch you next if I'm time. bad and I'm missing stuff, and you know more about the game, tell me. Cause I'm bad at it. We love belittling him on screen, so please give us give us things to mess with him. Um, until then, toodaloo. Bye, guys.